Hello and welcome in today's exciting episode. I make small butter egg double six double seven dresses and show you the burrito method and how to do the pockets. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect jacket. So last episode I comboried my fabric stash and um, sorted out all the scraps into colours blocking and, and I dumped out all my unfinished projects and then I carefully sorted them into piles. One of the piles was of Butterick 6677s and um, so I did half of them, the half with sleeves, I did those five and now I have six more that are just short summer dresses basically or long summer dresses sleeveless and I'm going to use the burrito method so let's dive in and do this okay don't worry I'm not going to show you the burrito method on every single one of these I'll do all of them and then I'll leave the orange one aside and I'll show you this so first you do the shoulders sew the shoulders together just the shoulders nothing else oh this one the back was in two bits so I had to sew a back seam but if you cut on the fold just the shoulders the next thing you Put the lining and the outer fabric together and you sew the neckline, pin and sew the neckline. And then the next thing you do is turn it in the correct way. So it was inside out when you sewed it. Turn it in the correct way and um, then you compress it. And um, oh yeah, oops, just ignore them. So I went and did the rest. And then, yep, yeah, once they were all done, then I will show you the next part. So I actually went and did all the burrito method bit for all the other ones first. So then when I got to the back to the orange one, I was, you know, absolutely 100% sure on how to do it. So what you do is you do one side at a time. So pick it left or right, and then you splay it out. So you've got, you can see all of the, the, lining and the outer side of the left or the right whichever one you're focusing on and then you're going to roll up the rest of the top and put it in the middle nestle it in the middle so that you've got your edges quite clear and pin it if you need to but make sure you take remember how many pins you used and then you nestle all the stuff inside and bring the edges over like a little blanket or as the title suggests a burrito and um, yeah, you just pin them together. Make sure you pin that center seam because that's the one on the shoulder so everyone will see it. And then I tend to pin one either side and then pin the edges and then sort of um, do it nice and smooth the other way around. Then you machine sew it and then you trim the seam allowance and then you clip the curves. I rarely trim seam allowance, but it does help you pull out the... Um, and then you just tug um, on the sleeve and you pull the whole thing through the tiny little um, shoulder strap and then you do the next side yeah so I rarely do cut seam allowance but on this particular point here I think it is worthwhile to do it so then you do the other side splay them out so you've got the outer and the lining then you roll everything in to the center of that and sort of make sure it's all nice and nestled right in the center. Then you pull over the lining to make the two edges meet and then you, um, here we go, and then you make sure those center seams are absolutely lined up um, and put a pin on either side just to make sure. Then um, you just go along and carefully pin one side then the other. And okay, so one side is done and then you just go do the other. And yeah, also always making sure that you keep out the, the rest of the top out of the sew line. So now that it's done, then you just double check because it would be absolutely hellish to try and unpick this. So yeah, so then I sewed it and then um, you just trim down your seam allowance and clip the curves again. And ta-da! And as you can see, I've trimmed off quite a bit. It's just so much easier to pull it through if there's less seam allowance here. But obviously, don't go too crazy. You don't want it fraying. So then, yeah, you just pull it through. All of that back bit has to be carefully pulled through that tiny little um, shoulder strap. So just carefully pull. And it will sort of look like it gets stuck, but just ease it 
really slowly and gently. Don't pull any pop any stitches or anything. Just do it slowly and surely, does it? And there we go. It is turned out. Now you will want to press it, but the um I you can if you want. I um do the sew up the sides first and then do all the pressing together. So um yeah, you've just got to join the outer two outer together and the linings together. And again, so this seam here is um the center is and the underarm seam so you really got to make sure that matches up because it is kind of visible so you've got your front and back outer and your lining back uh back and front so there we go now um is once the center is lined up perfectly then you just pin the rest together and once it's pinned then you very carefully sew it using your regular seam allowance and um and then you do the other side as well i won't <laughs> i won't show you both it's a little bit boring so um yeah and once they are done it is time to iron those seams flat seams flat actually there's one more thing that i do i haven't seen anyone else do this but what i do is i turn up the hem of the lining it just makes it easier once the dress is finished the last step you have to do is hand stitch the um this lining down over the raw seams of the skirt and if it's already got its um hem turned up it's just so much easier so um this is what i do and then you can go along and just pull out that thread there and everything will stay but it's so much easier if it's already turned up so i do this now and now i will press everything yeah, the iron didn't really make a cameo, but I'm up to the skirts. Before I make the orange one, however, I before I make this one, I did all the other ones first. So I'll give you a glimpse of, you know, me finishing each one. I didn't film each one because that would be incredibly boring and time consuming. So, um, yeah, the reason there's pins in the side there is because I didn't press them but you should. So anyway, I brought all the skirts over to the workbench and the first one I did was the Japanese floral um, cotton print, which is adorable. And um, yeah, instead of turning over quite a bit for the hem, I just sewed on a bit of plain black. So I'll iron that and then turn that up and it'll eat up less of the fabric at the bottom, which means it won't be too high up above the knee. Then the next one I did was this um, Scandinavian uh, Christmas fabric and it's really long. It's a ruby dress so it's got the three tiers of the skirt. And um, then the next one that I did was a Sally Kelly print at the front and the bamboo at the back. And I actually didn't have enough to do the inside of the pocket with the Sally Kelly fabric so I used black and you can actually see the pocket and it's going to look so cute with that shirt behind there when I finally finish those shirts. Next I did the blue one with the white daisies that have the mustard center. It's such a cute dress. I love how mustard the little middle of the flowers are. It's very cute. I'm going to have the most adorable summer wardrobe seriously but for the rest of the year i'll just wear like long sleeve t-shirts underneath then i did the navy blue one with roses on it and um, some of the peonies and that one is nice and long it's gorgeous so now it is time to show you how to do these pockets let us begin so the pockets are independent of the front of the skirt so there's basically three pieces the skirt front the um the corner of the front and the which is also part of the pocket and the inside of the pocket so first you have to do the inside of the pocket so you just pin those to the skirt front and sew them on machine sew them and once that's done you just clip the curve and turn them out so turn them just flip them over and um they're sort of hinged because they're sewn on and then you can either press them into place or I'm lazy so I just p um, put a few pins there and it sort of um, it doesn't press them exactly but it puts them in the right spot so now I've turned the whole thing over the other way and the next thing you do is you put the corner of the the top corner of the skirt on first you have to um just pin it to the inside bit of the pocket so that you can do that arc there 
and you just pin both of those and then you sew them. I sew them twice, two lines. And so it's still independent of the skirt front. But see, now your skirt front has its corner. And now that they're sewn in, all you have to do is just um, stay stitch across the top and the side just so that all the layers stay where they're supposed to while you sew the skirt front and the skirt back together. So as you can see here, I have sewn them. It's inside the seam line, so you won't see it once everything's sewn together, but it just keeps them in the right spot. And I also pinned all the layers, um, so the pocket and the skirt together, just while I'm sewing the side seams so that everything stays in the correct spot. So that's the front done. It's actually quite easy. It seems complicated, the pockets, but it's not. And then you sew the sides of the front and back of the skirt together and you just do, um, uh, just go over it twice near the pockets to strengthen it. And then you sew the skirt to the top and do that, reinforce it by doing it again. And the next the last thing is to just turn down the lining and hand stitch that on. And you also have to hand stitch the hem, obviously. But um, I'm not going to do the hand stitching at the moment because, um, yeah, I just made six of them. So I'll show you the ones that I made. And, um, yeah, I'll do the hand stitching later on this month. So um, this is the Blue Daisy one and the Scandinavian Christmas decorations one with the three tiers. And yeah, they're both adorable. I love them. This is a side view. And yeah, the, that um, Scandinavian print has such a full skirt. I love it. I do have a blue daisy um, matching sash for the blue one, but I haven't finished you just sort of like I've sewn them, but I haven't turned it out and I haven't hand stitched the end and I haven't ironed it. So you'll see them at the end of the month when I do my everything I made this month video. So these are the next two. I think these are my favorite of the this whole video. Um, the navy one. Ah, oh, that is just darling. So I ended up using the peony fabric for the top, the bodice, as well as um, so the skirt only had three tiers, but I added a fourth tier. Um, second from the bottom of the remains of the peony fabric. So I used it absolutely all of it up. And oh, I just love that one to bits. I love it so much. I think I'll just wear it in winter as well with like a couple of long sleeve t-shirts underneath and a hoodie over the top because it is darling. I love it. And I also love this Sally Kelly print on the right. It's got the bamboo print on the back. Oh, I love that one. The Sally Kelly one also has pockets. The long, um, the ruby ones don't have pockets. But um, yeah, as I said, I would probably wear it with a hoodie or um, handbag if I was going out anyway. So it doesn't bother me. Anyway, and the last two are the gorgeous cotton from Japan with the floral print on it. And the 1970s organic cotton, um, that's hilarious, that one. Um, they're both so different. Like, they're exactly the same pattern. And, um, yeah, just one looks really sh sort of a little bit chic and reserved and the other one looks very outgoing and hilarious in a good way. I love them both. Um uh, for close up, the green tie, the green sash looks absolutely gorgeous on the dark blue one. But from far away, um, maybe not so much. I'll change it later on and you'll see it on it with a different tie on it. This one, I actually made the orange tie back in January, I think. So you've probably seen it on a, on a few other dresses in the time being. But um, yeah, I finally made the dress. Obviously, I still have to do the hem that might help. But everything else, there's no other hand sewing on the dress. Well, the inside. You have to hand stitch the lining of the bodice over all the raw seams joining the bodice and the skirt. So here is the dress without the sash. It's a little baggy. Um, In the pattern, you're actually supposed to use a sew elastic around the waistline, but mm, it's not for me. I'd rather just have a baggy or choose to put a sash on it. And this is um, a different sash. I think it looks, yeah, much chicer like this. 
but I like it both ways. Okay, well, that's it, folks. I have... I've done six dresses for this video and uh, yeah, I think that's pretty impressive. <laughs> so I'm building up quite the summer wardrobe, but obviously you just wear a long top and maybe leggings underneath if you want to wear it and the weather's not warm enough. So um, yeah, I've still got all those other dresses to do and the rainbow dress, but I mean, I have done six dress, oh well, 11 if you count the ones with the sleeves. I've still got, um, oh, there's all those patches to do as well. I'm thinking maybe a patchwork section in with the rainbow raindrops dress, maybe. I don't know. I'm still not sure how I'm going to use up that raindrops fabric because it's so beautiful. I'm a little bit precious about it. I don't want to wreck it or misuse it or anything like that. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you've been inspired to, um, yeah, finish off some of your unfinished projects or um, turn them into patches and make something patchwork out of them. Anyway, oh gosh, look at all the ones I still have to do. It is a little depressing, but I'm choosing to focus on the positive. I have done 11 of them and that is a good thing. So oh, yeah, and there's those six shirts. Okay, so I'm going to go and, you know, make a list of everything that I still have to do. But thank you for watching and, um, yeah, be seeing you.